We're gonna do our in-place dynamic warm-up. So to start this out, we're gonna start in a Spider-Man lunge. Right, so let's go left foot or right foot up. You guys can choose. Alright. Make sure your front shin is nice and vertical, your front foot is flat, so we're practicing our tripod foot in the front. That back leg, you wanna feel tension right in the front of that hip flexor. Alright, so make sure we get the back leg straight enough to feel that. We're gonna put our hand down here. We're gonna have this space right here. We're gonna thread the needle. Right? So we're gonna get five repetitions. I want you guys to rotate under, keep your arm on the outside nice and straight. As you rotate under, you're gonna push this thigh out to the side. So you're gonna reach this way with the thigh without your foot coming up and around. All right? Then we're gonna squeeze this back glute. So the leg that's back behind you, I want you to squeeze that hip. You're gonna feel your hips get pushed forward. So that's what we want. You're gonna hold that. So push the thigh out, squeeze the butt cheek, and we're gonna do rotations with the T-spot. So eyes on me. We're gonna rotate down. Right, rotate the rib cage, try to get your elbow to the ground, and then rotate up, and then come back down. Try to get lower every time. All right, we're gonna get five repetitions here, and then we're gonna switch to the other side. Try to get lower every time, keep pushing that thigh out that's in the front, and keep squeezing that glute of the leg that's behind you. Once you get your five, switch out, we'll switch it up. Then the leg back, bring it front, vice versa. Remember, straighten that back leg out so you feel that tension in your hip flexor, right in front of your hip. The leg that's behind you, squeeze that butt cheek hard, push the hip forward. And then the leg that's out in front, drive that thigh out to the side. Externally rotate that hip. Try not to bend the elbow or the arm that's planted in front. Get five, and just look at the opposite. Sweet. All right. We'll go back to the original leg we started on. We're going to do a half kneeling hamstring stretch. Okay. But what I guys want you to do is don't be in line with your heel and knee because you're going to lose balance. So try to open the hips up, get a bigger base. You'll feel more stable. All right. I want you to relax the spine when you go over. So where your lower back meets your upper back, you're just going to fold over. All right. So the target area for this is going to be the hamstring group. All right, and a little bit of the calf if we're really tight, all right? So we're gonna make these dynamic, which means we're not gonna hang out too long in the box, all right? We're not gonna be static. So we're gonna reach forward, right? Try to get your fingers past your toes, and then come right back up. So reach forward, and then come right back up, all right? Keep your heel down, keep your toes up. If you want a little bit more out of this, you want to pull extra out of it, pull the toes up, actively pull the toes, and then go into it. You feel a deeper stretch and roll that calf. Five left positions here, and then the same thing as soon as you're done, you're just gonna switch it up. All right, so that other leg goes out straight. <clears throat> Reach out in front, and come back. We're not squeezing anything here, we're not squeezing glutes, not squeezing the lower back or back muscles, just reach forward. Get five and five. So we're gonna go back to that original leg. Just kind of take a knee for a second. So now we're gonna hit the adductor group. All right, adductor is a fancy word for your groin. Okay, so right in here. All right, it's tissue right here. Usually pretty sensitive. If you're not doing any cell tissue mobilization, okay, so it'll be easy as we go through. We're gonna bring that foot out to the side, get in kind of a lateral stance. All right. Now notice my outside foot, toes are flat, heel are flat. Don't collapse your foot on the side of the ground like this. Make sure we're flat, okay? So from here, we're gonna try to center as much as we can our hands and our torso between, somewhere between our knee and this outside foot. So you notice my back is nice and flat, just like a table, okay? Now what I want you guys to do is you have this space between your foot and your knee, right? This is hard to see, okay? But I want you to try to look real closely at my muscles turn on and this activation in my lower body. So I want you to try to squeeze the ground between your knee and your foot. All right, if you do that, you feel a bunch of tension in your adductor, okay? So you guys want you to practice that all over here. So squeeze the ground. So try to bring your knee and foot together. You're gonna to feel a bunch of tension, right? So you're gonna up like normal, just kind of straighten the leg out and shake it off, right? So as you're squeezing, we're gonna rock back and forth. All right, so that's the dynamic part. So check it out. We're gonna do five reps. I want you to squeeze the ground between your knee and foot. Then we're gonna shift our hips back towards the heel to stretch and then come forward to the left. So one repetition is gonna be hips back, squeezing the ground the whole time, and then back to relax, all right? Let's do five repetitions here. 
Remember, squeeze the ground, kind of bring your knee and foot together. Five repetitions here, and then we'll switch sides. Practice that breath, right? We talked about that breath last week. Right? When you come back to a relaxed position, breathe in, your nose, feel the belly up, and then keep that pressure in that belly as you go back, and then as you come forward, breathe out, and then before you go back into the hole, breathe in again. Try to get as much air, as much pressure as you can. Five and five. Next one is a, a pigeon stretch for my yogis in the house who should know what a pigeon is. I'm going to have you get into this in a little bit of a different way. So we're actually going to start in a front knee rest, all right? And then we're going to slide back into that pigeon position. All right, so I'm going to show you real quick, all right? So front knee rest, eyes on me first. All I want you to do is get your chest over your shoulders, so you should feel some pressure in your hands. Drop one knee, and then windshield wipe it to the side. And then we're going to shoot our body straight back. And if you do that correctly, you should just end up Break in the pigeon. Okay. Once you get here, right, before you guys get all crazy, eyes on me real quick. Once you get here, that back leg, right, I want you to squeeze the glute just like that first one we did. That's going to push your hips into neutral so we don't have this tilt back in my spine. Like right. So squeeze that butt cheek and then I want you to walk it out at an angle over this hip. You're going to feel a massive pressure and load in this hip. So keep that opposite glute squeezed. Walk it out and then come back up to relax. If you want to relax your glute at the top, you can. But squeeze it again and then go into right to the descent. So five repetitions here, and then we'll switch sides. And remember when we switch, we're gonna go back to front leaning rest, drop the other knee, windshield wipe it, and then shoot that leg back straight. Try to sit down right on that hip. Remember that other glute of that straight leg, that back leg. Squeeze, keep it squeezed. Be active with that glute. Then we're going to walk the body out over the leg that's in front. So we're going to go straight or kind of at that knee. Keep that knee sweet. Then when we're done, we're front leaning rest again. Then just drop the knee straight down. And then shoot, right, push yourself straight back. Let that back foot just fly on the ground. We're going to do a down dog, we're going to do an active dynamic down dog. Okay. So, we're going to get into that front leaning rest and we're going to pipe the hips up. So just do that by bringing your feet right kind of toward under your hips, okay? Now, active down dog, I want you to think of this space right here as a window, right? Where your shoulders are. So what I want you to do is, first thing, we're going to drive the heels down, we're going to drive the hips up, and we're going to do that by pushing your head through the window. And I want you to hold that position for a second. So again, back to relax, and then drive your head through the window. Make sure we don't stay on our toes. Drive the heels down. You're gonna feel more tension with your heels down through your posterior chain. Okay. So heels down, hips up. So we're doing that by driving the head through the window. So you're driving it through the shoulders, driving the head through the window. If you do this correctly, you're gonna have a nice decompression effect on your lower back. Pretty much one of the reasons why. You're Compress that little back. Alright. So pause for a second to pop, drive the hips back. 
push the earth away. Right, pause for a second and come back. So we're going to get five reps here, and then we'll stand up on our feet. Remember, front leaning rest to start, but just walk the feet under a little bit. Heel to go down first. Hips rise up. And the legs be straight at the knee if you can. If we have something going on where we can't straighten them up, that's fine. We can both bend it all right. Drive the head through the window. So you're trying to push your head through your shoulders. Heel down, hips up, head to the window. Prisoner split squat series. So we're going to do a regular split squat, a lateral split squat, and then a rotational split squat. Okay. So the reason why they're called prisoner is because we're going to have an enemy behind the head, just like this. We want to ruin that, right? So we practice that organizational, right, philosophy that we call the two hand rule. Okay. So hands behind the head keeps us nice and vertical. If we don't have our hands behind the head, sometimes, right, we're not paying attention. We get a little lazy with our posture. Shoulders go forward, and then. Consequently, our spine will follow. Okay. So, hands behind the head. I want you to take your shoulder blades, pull them down your back. So, it should feel a little bit nice and tall on the chest. Right? So, that's this walk to start. We're going to take our back leg, we're going to step back behind us. Notice how I'm in my big toe. So, I don't want my heel in the back going down like this. So, if you're here, that's all right. You just need to work on some big toe mobility. So, I want you to drive, I want you to do the calf raise. I want you to drive through that big toe in the back. That's going to push you. Forward, all right, so we should feel some load in the hip flexor right here. That's what we want, all right? The back knee is going to lead the way. So we're going to stay nice and tall, right? Squeeze the core a little bit, squeeze the glute in the back. We're going to drop the back knee down, and then we're going to drive up through the front leg. All right, so we're going to get five repetitions just like this. Make sure, even though you feel the tension in the front here, that back leg, right? We're loading that hip flexor as well as the glute in the front. I want 95% of this load, this force, to come from your front leg. When you get down to the bottom, make sure you're driving through that quad and that hip to stand back up. Make sure we're staying balanced in these split squats. I just want you to get your five, and switch to the other side, switch it up. Remember, tripod foot, equal pressure, big ball, little ball, front edge of the heel of that front foot. You start to lose that hip flex tension in the front, you get back foot. Five and five, and then just stare at me so I know you're done. Next one. From our front, we're just going to go to the side. So we're going to go lateral, okay? Just like this. Now, I want you guys, sometimes we get a little bit too narrow with this, and we just see people just kind of leaning forward like that, okay? I want you to get a good wide stance at least. Three or four, maybe more feet between both of your feet, okay? The non-squat leg, so if this is my squat leg, right, I want that foot to be pointed up. So I want to turn my toes, just like this, away from my body. My heel is down, my toes are up. All I'm going to do is, I'm going to shift my weight into this hip and this leg. Hips go back always to lead the way, but the knee is going to go over those toes, so my knee tracks over. I want you guys to go as low as you can, keeping your trunk, your torso, nice and tall. If you start to sacrifice your spinal position just to get lower, that's not a good way to treat your performance at all, right? So we need to keep nice and tall, stay tight, remember two-hand rule, don't let the rib cage ascend, don't let it extend, all right? So we're here, nice and tight, hips back, come down, from the bottom position, drive through the quad, drive through the glute, and come back up. Stay nice and tall, nice and tall with the spine. Like that out straight, your arms squat legs, straight. Remember, don't sacrifice the lower back for mobility. Let your hips, let your knee, let your ankle be mobile. Let your lumbar spine be organized, nice and neutral. Should be able to do some arm on every chest. 
start to bend over and throw that chest towards the ground. Five and five each time. The last one's a little tricky. The last one's a rotational squat. All right. So what I want you guys to do is we're going to start straight up like this. We're going to put hands behind the head to prisoner style. Right. We're going to step back behind us and squat just like this. All right. So I'm rotating. So notice right, my hips and chest move together. So my first action, besides moving my foot out to the side, is my hips and chest rotate together. So I'm returning to this front position every single rep. All right. So hands behind the head, core tight, let your lower body move over. All right. So I'm going to rotate, watch my front foot. I'm going to need to come up into my heel, all right, and I'm coming back to the beginning. So again, up into the heel, and then back to the beginning. All right. So you get five and five on the side. Let the hips and shoulders move together. So that's our in-place dynamic warm-up, right? No equipment needed, minimal space needed. That's a great one to do um, pretty much any day, but obviously it's down with maybe lower body, uh, maybe going for a run in the box uh, pretty quick. It's a little bit longer because I like to talk a lot. Right? But you guys know, right? So if you learn that one, you can pretty much do it less than five minutes. All right? Just make it long, five, ten guys, maybe even more. Make like an active recovery session out of it. Right? Good to go. Um, get you guys pulled up and then uh, 